Walt Whitman's Leaves of Grass is a collection of poems without a central narrative. Let's summarize these poems now. In Song of Myself, Whitman's speaker introduces himself as a poet and voice of the American people. He celebrates his poetic vision and catalogs the vast diversity of the American public. Readers, join in a poetic dialogue with him. In A Song for Occupations, the speaker praises the American people for having many occupations, which he lists and declares that all of them have equal value in his estimation. He wishes for each person to accept his or her worth and contribution to the whole. In To Think of Time, the speaker asks his reader if he thinks he is nothing, then declares all the ways in which the reader is not nothing. Despite cosmically short lifespans, humans are something because they're unique. The mark they make has an eternal quality. In The Sleepers, the speaker presents a vision of floating over the bodies of sleeping American people. He lists various types of sleepers, all equal in sleep. He is able to enter others' dreams, take on their identities, and understand them. In I Sing the Body Electric, the speaker describes various people in acts of love and friendship, describing anecdotes about the communion of bodies and his observations. All bodies are equally wonderful. In Faces, the speaker describes all the various types of faces he sees, both pleasant and hideous. And despite their differences, he sees them all and approves of them all. He can see beneath the surface to the core of human potential. In Song of the Answerer, a young man comes to visit the speaker, seeking answers and catalogs all the various people who accept him as he accepts them. He sees their inner beauty and this transforms them. In Europe, the 72nd and 73rd years of these states, Europe revolts against their royal rulers and Liberty comes to lend her support. The speaker will never give up his belief in Liberty. Tyrants will never control her. In a Boston ballad, the speaker attends a march to protest federal soldiers escorting a fugitive slave back to his master. Sarcastically, he says Congress should import King George's bones and bow down to them. In There Was a Child Went Forth, a child inspects the things he encounters in the world, and as he does, he becomes them. These objects are also now a part of the reader. In Who Learns My Lesson Complete, the speaker gives his audience a lesson, which is that one's first lesson is to learn how to learn lessons. He declares that everything is wonderful. Just try to find him something not wonderful. In Great Are the Myths, the speaker explains what he finds great. Myths, liberty, equality, democracy, and many other concepts and things. And there needs to be balance between good and evil and life and death. In I Hear America Singing, the speaker lists the diverse voices of an American public. Each person sings a song about his own experience, and each experience is unique and wonderful. In Starting from Palmanoc, while at home, the speaker calls to all people in America to immerse themselves in his poetry and declares himself the poet of them all, no matter who they are. In I Saw in Louisiana a Live Oak Growing, the speaker sees a tree in Louisiana and takes a twig from at home. He often looks at the twig and thinks how he could never be as content as the tree hmm. to be alone. In Song of the Open Road, the speaker travels on the open road and catalogs the diversity of American people he meets there. And he invites his audience to come along with him, giving them his rules for the road. In Crossing Brooklyn Ferry, the speaker watches the Brooklyn Ferry as people head home from work in Manhattan, admiring the city and its inhabitants, the river, waves, and the sunset. Everyone is unified in their enjoyment of nature. In Pioneers, oh Pioneers, the speaker urges his audience, his fellow pioneers, a new generation, to seize a new world alongside him, trekking under a flag that unites them. In Out of the Cradle, Endlessly Rocking, the speaker discovers a nest of two birds. When the female bird goes missing, the male bird sings a sad song, which awakens the speaker's poetic spirit. He realizes that death is the word superior to all others. In As I Ebbed with the Ocean of Life, the speaker goes to the shore, troubled, likening himself to useless driftwood. He begs his mother, the ocean, to let the flow within him continue so he can write better poetry. We are all just driftwood in the ocean of life. In Beat, Beat Drums, the speaker commands the drums and bugles of war to beat and blow loudly. The public needs to be called to war. This is their purpose. In When Lilacs Last in the Dooryard Bloomed, the speaker laments the loss of his president, Abraham Lincoln. 
He takes a sprig from a lilac bush and places the sprig on a coffin. He hears a bird sing a sad song. At first, the speaker does not join in, but when he does, he finally accepts death and keeps his memory of his loved ones. In O oh, Captain, My Captain, the speaker praises his captain, Abraham Lincoln, on leading the ship safely to port. When he sees the fallen captain dead upon the deck, he is upset, so the speaker walks the deck instead. In By Blue Ontario's Shore, the speaker sits by the blue shore of Lake Ontario and is asked to write a poem of America. The speaker catalogs America's cities, natural wonders, and people, and declares he should be America's poet. And when the bards of old visit, he tells them to go away. And in A Noiseless Patient Spider, the speaker watches a spider build a web, ceaselessly working like the way his soul works to understand the eternal. Walt Whitman's famed poetry collection, Leaves of Grass, contains, in its own unique way, three central characters. I, Abraham Lincoln, and you. That's right, the first character is, well, I. The Walt Whitman persona is not the same as the historical Walt Whitman. Whitman introduces the first person persona in the first poem of Leaves of Grass, Song of Myself saying, Walt Whitman, an American, one of the roughs, a cosmos. He asserts himself as an omniscient speaker, a poet able to insert himself into any narrative and understand every person's life. In Song of Myself, he says, I contain multitudes. This persona is a mythical creation, part of a complex narrative identity different from the author Whitman. Whitman's speaker eulogizes Abraham Lincoln in several poems, describing him as both his captain in O Captain, My Captain, and his star in When Lilacs Last in the Dooryard Bloomed. Whitman rarely singles out individual people, opting instead to speak to a collective, but he makes an exception for his beloved president, Abraham Lincoln, whom Whitman felt was a hero who lived for liberty. The last character in the poems is you. Whitman wanted to be able to interact with his audience face to face, which is why his speaker often addresses readers directly, frequently using rhetorical questions, almost as if he expects them to respond. In fact, he wrote his poems to be read aloud and discussed so that America could absorb them, just like Whitman's narrative persona has absorbed America. Shorelines and plants are the earthly symbols that are cosmically significant in Walt Whitman's landmark poetry collection, Leaves of Grass. In Leaves of Grass, shorelines represent a place of emotional stability for Whitman. He goes back to his beloved Palmanach in his most confessional poems, Out of the Cradle Endlessly Rocking, and As I Ebbed with the Ocean of Life. In As I Ebbed with the Ocean of Life, Whitman's speaker ponders if he is but a little washed up drift. To the ocean of life, all are but drifts. In Out of the Cradle, Endlessly Rocking, his mythical origin poem, the grown man speaker throws himself on the sand, confronting the waves as he remembers the experience that made him a poet as a child. The grown man comes here to the shoreline to reassure himself that he is indeed a poet. It was here too, on this shoreline, where he first encountered the birds that taught him the language of empathy. And once the female of the pair disappeared, Whitman's speaker listened intently to the male's lament, a lament that awoke his poetic spirit. And in the gray moonlight on Palmanach's gray beach, the sea whispered to him the sweet song of the secret of death. And of course, in By Blue Ontario's Shore, Whitman sits by the shoreline to commune with the phantom and deliver a poem that comes from the soul of America. Plants, in Whitman's poems, symbolize the cycle of growth and change. It's no surprise plants turn up in a poetry collection named Leaves of Grass. Consider the lilacs in When Lilacs Last in the Dooryard Bloomed. They're especially emblematic of this cycle, one that inevitably ends in death. In the poem, the ever-returning spring brings lilacs every year. In the prime of its life, the lilac is tall growing with every leaf a miracle. Later, Whitman breaks off a sprig of lilac to lay on Lincoln's coffin, a symbol of its diminishing purpose. When Whitman finally comes to understand death, the lilac is absorbed into Whitman's own soul. 
in Song of Myself, the first poem of the 12 that make up the original edition of Leaves of Grass, a child asks Whitman's speaker, what is the grass? The speaker answers him, I guess the grass is itself a child, the produced babe of the vegetation. In this way, Whitman cleverly points out to the reader directly that plants are symbols of the cycle of life in his work. He explains that grass seems to be like the beautiful uncut hair of graves. And in an endless cycle of life and death, grass and other plants decompose to form fertilizer for new plants to grow. Whitman's speaker makes himself immortal by surrendering to this cycle, imploring his reader, if you want me again, look for me under your boot soles. Even after he is gone, Whitman will live on in his leaves of grass. Democracy, unity versus individualism, and nature are the themes that make up the metaphorical ground beneath the feet of the poetic journey encompassing Walt Whitman's Leaves of Grass. Reading poems aloud was Whitman's preferred method for a reason. Reading aloud makes poems inclusive and communal, creating a democratic shared experience. The free verse form of Whitman's poetry underscores his democratic message. Countless lines stuffed with lists of the diverse people of America, all equal and good in his eyes. Whitman perpetually preaches a message of equality for all, no matter one's station in life. This is Whitman's democratic ideal. He wishes for all people to realize and appreciate their inherent value and everyone else's. In Great Are the Myths, Whitman acknowledges that the processes of democracy are often messy, with plunges and throws and triumphs and falls. But democracy is worth going to battle for. His speaker states in Pioneers, O oh Pioneers, never must you be divided. In our ranks, you move united. Here, he envisions an enterprising people ready to follow the great American poet and his idealized vision of democracy. Unity versus individualism is a theme as important in Whitman's Leaves of Grass as it was to the poet himself. As much as he believed in an egalitarian, collective, and democratic society, Whitman was a champion of the diversity of individual contributions to the whole. As such, he proposed that for an individual to have a fulfilling life in a collective society, each must express their own uniqueness. The varied viewpoint each individual brings is an essential component of what makes America great. In By Blue Ontario Shore, he declares, it is not America who is so great, but you, his individual audience members. He goes on to say that individuals are formed through poems and the American contract is altogether with individuals. In other words, only by each person pursuing his or her own greatness can a nation become great. In many ways, the tension between unity and individualism in Leaves of Grass is almost paradoxical. Whitman's speaker claims to promote unity and yet also has a tendency to withdraw and set himself apart. Nature was a democratic and unifying force for Whitman. Even though each human is unique, shaped by a variety of characteristics, including race, social status, and geographical living situation, all humans are united in their experience of the natural world. Whitman often uses natural elements as extended metaphors in his work to show how nature is a shared experience. For example, in As I Ebbed with the Ocean of Life, the ocean is a great mother who treats all her children equally, ones who finally lie in drifts at her feet, regardless of who they are. <laughs> 